And this leads me to a prophetic word that I have, and it's more like a prophetic perspective, but I believe we're feeling the birth pains of one of the greatest revivals, and they're happening. These birth pains are happening right now. Both the terrible things that are happening that feel like just unlimited disasters are happening right now, but there's also outpourings happening as we're seeing what's been happening in the undercurrent of Christian faith, things that are not talked about, things that are not seen, they're starting to surface and they're hitting news stories like the Asbury Revival, hit news all around the country and I believe around the world. We're also seeing other stories like Damar Hamlin and we're seeing other stories hit mainstream world and actually change values where the NFL was saying, we don't really want to say prayer. So they actually, the next day after Damar Hamlin was injured, they said, our thoughts are with him. And then all these athletes who were NFL players were saying, our thoughts? No, we are praying for our brother. We're praying for his healing. We're praying that God rescues him from this terrible thing that happened. And then the NFL actually posted, and all the teams posted, we're praying for Damar Hamlin. And they realized that we don't need to use this watered down, neutered language that we actually do want to pray for him. We don't want to just be, you know, just relevant to a society that doesn't care about God and prayer, but most of society does care about that. As a matter of fact, four out of five people in the Western world care about prayer right now. So it's not wrong to say it, even for somebody who's not praying in the right way to the right person. We need to talk about prayer more and more. And Christians, we need to model that prayer. Well, as the outpourings of God are rumbling in the nations, the enemy's trying to distract and circumvent what God's doing. But God's glory is always greater than the counterfeit. And we're seeing that. Something you need to discern and train your eyes to see it more and more because you're going to be so encouraged and live with such a hope-filled perspective. But we saw and we're seeing God move and the enemy is trying to preempt or counter it with every single step. But guess what? Jesus always, always, always wins. Well, the devil showed up at the Grammys. We saw that. But Jesus showed up on the campuses. The liberal agenda showed up in the movies. But every month for the past 14 months, faith-based films rank in the top three, if not the top one film spot. This month, it was Jesus Revolution. Wokeness showed up on the football fields by not standing for the flag. But then a revival showed up in the NFL for DeMar Hamlin and has already brought many people to faith or back to faith. A political spirit showed up against the Supreme Court justices, but then a case has been prophesied about that was impossible to reverse was reversed, Roe versus Wade. That along with a dozen other major victories for conservative values like securing the ability to pray in school, do business as a Christian with Christian values, express freedom of speech and others are all miraculous when you live in a land that's so lawless right now. And again, lawlessness showed up on the streets through violent, what they call protests, but really just acts of violence and riots. But now evangelism is happening all across our nation in America in the same places. And there's prayer events, worship events, evangelism that's happening in those same places and, and targeted even by some of the people who said, well, this is where it broke out. We're going to go there and do some things. God's flexing his arm in the nations right now and displaying that he still has purpose for our nation and he still has purpose for the nations. And he's giving us an opportunity right now to return to him in a powerful way. As Satanist clubs are filling up, there's been reports that the Satanist actual religion had, uh, they got so overflowed with their youth program that they can't accept any more kids in. Well, a report from the Barner Group shows that 74% of teens in America want to know Jesus and have a genuine hunger for Christianity. So take that. That's amazing. We need to discern what God's doing right now so we can enter into faith for our own lives to be fully reconciled to him. So we can live out of God's great purpose and our great purpose that we have through his love right now. And we're, we're bound for a move of God, whether it's an actual revival that everybody sees or whether it's just in your own life where all of a sudden you have a hunger to read the word to pray and to have his activity and to know what's in his heart and his mind for you and your life and your family right now. That's gonna make all the difference in the world. We've had too many people who aren't spiritually hungry, who are living lukewarm, who are living compromised, who are living in a place where it's like, I don't even know how to connect to my faith anymore. I don't know how to, is there even a church to go to? And God's awakening people to find. He's sending the lonely in families. Some of you are gonna be finding your church again. You're gonna be finding your spiritual family again. Maybe you were abused or hurt. Maybe your friend was, or maybe a pastor fell, or there was a moral issue, or maybe something happened where church doesn't have a good, maybe branding in your mind right now, but God has raised up people and churches all over the world that are gonna have, that are gonna be a home for you, a hospital for you to grow in and, and heal in. And I wanna encourage you to try again, not only Christianity, but try again to find a church that might just change everything for you. 